joining in and for listening. Uh, my name is Mark. That's also when into birds. That um, soon after, about 2005, um, I was already guiding. I became a guide through some opportunities, and then I started organizing tours in maybe 2011. So um, almost 10 years now. Um, I'm I'd like to talk, I'm gonna talk about birds and birding in the Philippines. Um, okay, so let's start now. So um, I'm sure everybody knows where the Philippines is, but I'd like to show um, where Philippines is for, for uh, everyone. It's just um, south of, of Taiwan and China. And we're neighbors with almost everybody in the, in the region, Asia, Asian bird fair. Uh, southeast, west is the southeast continental Asia, and then to the south is uh, Malaysia and Indonesia. So here's just a few um, geological facts about the Philippines. Philippines is um, has about more than 7,500 islands. Uh, I, I saw this in uh, Wikipedia. Now it's Officially, maybe 7,641 islands, with 2,000 of which are only 2,000 of which are inhabited. Uh, we have a total land area of about 300,000 square kilometers. The climate in um, in in the Philippines, well, where we're where we are in Manila and the majority of our Luzon, uh, has about um, like a two defined seasons. Um, it's usually dry from November to April. April is usually summer. It's hot, the hottest month of the year. Until May, it's still quite hot. And then towards the end of May, June, the wet season and the typhoon comes into about October. Um, in the south of the country in Mindanao, um, there's no real pronounced um, dry season, but um, it's quite rainy all throughout the year. Um, about so, because we're in a kind of tropical country, um, the most of the most of the habitat is of um, tropical rainforest. Um, we also have other kinds of mangrove and swamp, but most are most are five hundred islands. Uh, I thought it's in the that now. Um, should, should I continue? It? Yeah, go on. Okay. Um, so the, about altitude, as you can see in the map, um, it's mostly mostly lowland. The green is kind of lowland, and then the yellow is kind of low mountains. And the highest mountains are just about two thousand. Um, and the highest mountain that we have is in Mindanao. It's about just just over three thousand meters above sea level. So um, the Philippines is considered as one of the world's mega diverse countries. What this means is that you know, for a country, not just the size, but we're actually, relatively speaking, a small country. Um, but for, for what we, we have such a high degree of um, endemicity and diversity in the Philippines. Just um, to give an example, um, um, amphibians, we have, this is a picture of the Isarog forest frog, amphibians. We have about 105 species and 82 of which are endemic, 78%. Reptiles, Philippine silken lizard is just an example of an endemic reptile we have. Um, 250, we have about 354 species and 208 are endemic, so it's 81%. And mammals, 179 species and 111 are endemic, 
Luzon is actually considered by Dr. Kinney in his new book on uh, mammals of the Philippines of mammals of Luzon is considered to have the, you know, in to have um, like the most in square square meters, the most dense, no, not density, the most number of, of mammals um in anywhere in the world but our mammals are mostly small we don't have big really big charismatic animals we have a lot of, of rodents and rats um, but this one is actually quite cute i think the lord northern luzon giant cloud rat um insects um we have a lot 20,000 insects and 70 percent um endemic scarlet mormon is an example of an endemic um uh, insect and plants, we have a lot of plants, 50%. Um, I'm sure these numbers, you know, change um, over the course of new, new, new studies and new discoveries, but um, you get the idea that we have quite a high uh, degree of uh, endemicity. And then, and then now birds, I'm going to talk about birds, which is our most, our interest. Um, so, this is an infographic produced by the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines. This is from the latest of February 18, 2020. We have now about 709 species of birds, 241 of which are endemic. This is about 30%, a third of the Philippine birds are endemic. Um, 256 are migrants, I mean, they come here in the, during the winter and then, and then go back. Um, to other countries where, where they breed in the summer. Um, and then we have 212 um, residents. But actually, the residents or that we have are actually subspecies of um, the major species where, where it's shared in the other countries. And these endemic subspecies are, all, I mean, these subspecies are also endemic. So the number 241 is likely to increase as well. Um, just um, so here is a, again a map of the Philippines, and um, I like to show like the different endemic bird areas in the Philippines. Luzon is um, the biggest island that we have. It's in the north. We have 36 species. Palawan is the one in blue. The long one in the west. We have 22 species. Um, in Greater Mindanao, we have 51 species. Um, but Mindanao is the second biggest island that we have, but actually it's ornitholo ornithologically speaking quite similar to um, Bohol and the Eastern Visayas. Bohol has one species that's endemic. Western Visayas, which is Negros and Panay, also in red, 19 Cebu has three species, Mindora in purple has nine species, Sulu and Tawitawi has six species, Romblon Tablas has three species, and Kamigin Sur Talayan, uh, smaller islands um, have one species each. Um, so this is an um, infographic I, I saw on Facebook the other day, and I, I just took it, and then I thought I'd share it with everyone else. I thought it it looks really nice and it shows the different formulas that we have in the Philippines. And I think it also shows, you know, um, the idea that um, um, the isolation of islands produces, you know, different species through, you know, millennia and shows just, you know, just the tiny bits of changes and it shows how, how the isolation of islands can produce species on it after, after millennia. And then that's, that's also why we have a lot of, I mean, a high degree of endemic species. Um, okay, so this is another map of the Philippines and um, it's just a sample itinerary of a trip to the Philippines. And usually, usually we go to big major islands like Luzon, Palawan and, and Mindanao and then also a sampling of, of Visayas. So I'm gonna start the talk by showing birds of Luzon. 
which is also where Manila is. Manila is the one in uh, this white square. And we usually go to these different sites like Mount Makiling, Subic Bay, Los Banos, Candama Marsh, and Banawe. So actually Manila, Manila doesn't have a lot. Now it's really, really tough being um, an ECQ because we don't have a lot of greener, green places that we go to in Manila and we're stuck in Manila and we can't really go birding a lot. Um, but we do have one, one site that's quite good for, for endemic birds. Uh, it's in Quezon City in La Mesa Eco Park. This is a group of, I think, um, some of the group of uh, the wild birds of the Philippines birding at La Mesa. It's just small, it's actually a very, if you get to go there, it's a very small patch of forest in the middle of the, of the city, but has some good birds. So the star bird there is the um, ashy ground thrush. It's an endemic thrush and it's only found in the Philippines, of course, uh, but it's a tough bird to see otherwise, but there are quite a few birds, few breeding pairs in La Mesa. And sometimes uh, La Mesa also has hooded pitta and Philippine pitta. It's, red, it's a red belly pitta now split to uh, Philippine pitta. There's also Philippine magpie robin, Philippine pygmy woodpecker, and lowland white eye there. So this, so like, so um, La Mesa Park, I started it, I started the presentation by showing it. It's, if you know, you're on a business trip and you only have one day, here it's a it's a few or a few hours here. It's a, one of the phases you can try to go to. Another another site that you can go to on a day trip is Kandava. Here's a long time ago with some of my friends in Kandava, um, and this is our, our um, a very good looking and famous Mike Lu. It's also in Kandava. <laughs> he says. It's um, featured um, in a magazine recently, so I, I stole the pictures. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, um, a picture of Mount Araya in Kandaba. It's, a, it's like a, a view, a, it's a classic view um, that you can see when you're there. Yeah, like this one is uh, some pictures of people birding in, um, in Kandaba. So the starbird there is the Philippine duck, which is our endemic duck. We only have one duck. Actually, actually, um, Kandaba is not really, it's a good site for migratory ducks, which arrive in November. And then, um, but for visiting birders who want to see the endemic Philippine duck, it's good. And then we also have um, Philippine swamp hen, split from the purple swamp hen. So Kandaba has a lot of, um, migratory birds. I'm not going to feature because I'm going to I'm going to focus on endemics. But that, yeah. So barred rail is also there. It's not an endemic, but it's good to see. It. I think it's only also in um, Sulawesi and in Indonesia. So it's good to see it here. Um, it's quite common. Um, so and then street weed warbler is is not an endemic. But it's uh, actually, we don't know where else it is found. The wintering site is only known in Tandaba. Um, but the last record was in 2009. I was lucky to see it then, but I don't think anybody has seen it again. And so, I don't know, it's just, just a nice uh, info about Tandaba. So, Mount Makiling is the next site that we can go to. Um, actually, Mount Makiling can also go on a day trip, but um, if you can stay overnight or two nights, it's a lot better. This is um, one of the uh, trails going up to the forest. Thank you, Adri, for the picture. Um, so this is, these are some of the birds that you can find there. This is my favorite that spotted wood kingfisher. And this is an indigo banded kingfisher. Indigo banded is like a common kingfisher, it's small and it just uh, stays on rocks along the river. Spotted wood kingfisher is more like a forest bird. And here are two 
um, endemic um, makohas that are endemic to Luzon. And then they're really stunning when you get to see them. Um, red crested makoha and scale feathered makoha, the, uh, the good birds you see in, um, in Makiling. This is a white browed shama, and it's one of the best singers. There is in, um, in Luzon or in the Philippines, and this here's a sampling of it. So, so I, I thought I, was, I thought I, I think I hear a lot in um, in Makiling when you're going up the trail. Um, so here are a few smaller birds that you get to see there as well. Um, this is the striped head of Rabdornis. Uh, Rabdornis is um, unusual. It's like, it's like, um, it's like a nut hatch in a way, but it goes up, it's a creeper that goes up in tree trunks, but it's actually, it used to be a separate family, its own family, own endemic family only in the Philippines, but now it's been subsumed to the starling family, um, although it doesn't look a lot like starling or behave like one. Um, flaming sunbird. There's lots of, of um, sunbirds and flower peckers in um, healing. And gray back tailed bird, you also see there. And if you're very lucky, and then not many people are lucky, um, sometimes you can see um, Luzon bleeding heart in the healing. Uh, okay, so this is me. Another site that we go to is a, it's a new site that we um, we just discovered a few years ago, and it's very very good. Oh, by the way, Makiling is actually just a, um, only reached about to about a thousand meters above sea level, so we can only usually go to the um, foothills like 300, 400, 500 meters. And in final times, like in between, like mid elevation goes to 600, 700 meters above sea level. So you get a mix of different species from lowland and uh, and a bit of the highland. It's like the lower limit of their of their distribution. So in final times, a really really good site. Uh, so as you can see, this is we just usually go birding by the roadside, and uh, there if you go early, uh, some of the some, some good birds. Um, it's also here, you can also go on a day trip. It's about two hours from Manila. But um, again, if you have more time, like two, three days, it's much better because finding birds is also not so easy here. Um, so one of the special birds, if you go early in the morning, is uh, look at just how beautiful the, um, the colors of, of the food of and we also have yellow-breasted fruit dove there, cream-bellied fruit dove. There are actually quite a few number of doves in Infanta Medi, about six to seven different species and all are endemic. And then, of course, sometimes you, you, this is the smaller, small flocks that, that are quite common there. Um, elegant tit, blue-headed fantail, yellowish white eye, Sulfur did not hatch there, everywhere there. And then there are a lot of, of smaller birds still um, that like to feed on the, on the figs. As you can see in the pictures, this other back flower pecker, did not, it's not easy to see. Um, buzzing flower pecker, orange belly flower pecker. Um, so also like see this, this um, Philippine fair blue bird also likes to feed on the, on the figs. There. It's also a good place for it to, um, to see it because it's not common in, anywhere else. Um, this grand red horn is not common at all anywhere. And then even there, it's hard to see, but you get to it try hard, you can see it there. Um, even more uncommon and very, very difficult to see elsewhere. Um, usually, people have, we have to go camping or go up north. This is also. Um, endemic to Luzon, and it's a big pitta, it's the biggest pitta, about nine inches. Um, so we discovered this new site, 
uh, and then we found it, we found it there. So a lot, sometimes, I mean, the first time we were there, we were, you can see it from the roadside. Now it's a little bit more difficult to see it, but it's just a stunning bird. And of course, the Rufus um, Hornbill is also there. It's a big, big bird, and, and they usually go in flocks, and then usually hear them first. And um, it's not always easy to see, but you hear them, but when you see them, they're really, really nice. Um, and then here is uh, also a biggest owl. It's also an infanta, but we have a site um, on the way there, on the way out from there that we go to. It's where it's roosting sometimes, or <laughs> most of the time it's there. Um, this is a Philippine eagle owl. So another site that we go to is Subic Bay. Subic Bay is opposite direction of Nakiling and Infante to the west. Um, it's about two hours drive at least, two, three hours drive at least from Manila. You can also go on a day trip, but it's going to be tiring. So overnight, or two, two nights or two days, it's nice. But yeah, you have to go in the early morning where birds are most active in the late afternoon. So this is a group that I led there um, a couple of years ago. And the forest there is a little bit different also. It's very low light, it's almost sea level, and it's very dry. This is a view of the Subic Bay, and this is uh, quite a good forest. Subic Bay actually was a, a US Navy air base, Navy air base that used to be, but now not anymore. So it's, in a way, it helps protect the forest there. So the birds there, this is a green racket tail. It's a parrot, so you can see the, the rackets at the end of its long tail. Um, and um, this is endemic to Luzon. And I don't know anywhere else where you can find them in Luzon, only in Subic. Subic is a good stronghold for it. Um, and it's quite many there, actually. And there are also a lot of parrots, other parrot species in, in Subic. So actually, Subic is one of my favorite places. Um, Philippine hanging parrot, Pulisisi, you can see there, Guayabero. It, this one is small, small bird, it looks like a mango shape, like a mango. It's difficult to see in the foliage. And there's a bigger one, it's called Dunate parrot, also there. Um, it's also very, Subic is also very good for, um, for woodpeckers. Here's a, an endemic zone flame back and a Suti woodpecker. Um, this is a white belly woodpecker. It's not endemic, it's also in um, Southeast Asia, but it's nice, it's always nice to see. And um, hornbills, hornbills are plentiful in Subic. This is a Luzon terrific hornbill. This, the, the, the white one is the male and the black one is the female. Coleto. Coleto is uh, actually all over the Philippines, except for Palawan. And um, it gets, its, I don't the Coleto is a Philippine name, but the scientist named Sarkov Scovel, which just is, means Scovel means um, bald. And you can see his face is almost really bald. It like it looks like it has a brain for a for a face. And uh, this one is a very local and very uh, quite a rare bird, and everybody wants to see it in um, Subic. It's like called a white fronted tit. It's, and then if you hear it there, it's quite it's rare. But when you hear it, it's you know it's there. And also, um, Subic is has a good colony of um, uh, these flying foxes. These are called the golden crown flying foxes. And these are actually the, the biggest bats, the biggest flying fox in the world. And it's endemic again to, uh, I think, in Luzon or Philippines. Uh, okay, and then of course there are owls at night, you know, when it doesn't, there's no stopping and burning in, uh, in Philippines. At night, you see the, you can see chocolate fubo, uh, Philippine scop sow, and Luzon hawk owl. Okay, so so that was if you 
if you have about a week, you've gone to those places. So add a few more days, two more days, and you can also go to Banao, which is different now. It's above two thousand. It's a north, north, northern zone, and um, the elevation is above two thousand. This is a picture of um, the Banao rice terraces, which is a rice fields that were built about two thousand years ago. And this is another view. Uh, so it's really picturesque there. It's another view of the rice terraces with a little barrio there, the village. So there are lots of uh, small flocking birds there. And some of the endemics are this one. This, this one is only in the mountain, um, mountain parts of Luzon, Chestnut Face, Babbler, Luzon bush warblers, also only there in the Cordilleras. And then mountain tailor bird, mountain tailor bird is not endemic, it's also. It's also there. Um, some good birds you see there, also flame crown flower pecker. This is a female, mountain shrike, and Luzon water red star. Luzon water red star is, um, I know for, for Victor in Taiwan, it's like the plumbus water red star, but this one is bigger um, and it likes to be on rivers, on rocks and rivers, and pristine, just pristine rivers. Um, and then this is one of the good birds to see there. And of course, there's an owl, uh, the Luzon crops out. So, okay, so that's birding in, the, in Luzon. So usually we have about seven to eight days there. If you have more days, now we can go to other, other places in, in the Philippines. Um, next, now I'll bring you to um, Palawan. So Palawan, yeah, maybe we need about three to four days there because actually Palawan is really good at 22 endemics. Palawan actually um, is considered the last frontier of the Philippines because it has like the best forest cover left and it's always um, like the, um, considered the, like has, have, having the best beaches. And it's really nice there, um, very picturesque. So also Palawan, um, these birds are not endemic because Palawan, Palawan actually, geographically speaking, used to be um, um, connected to mainland Asia, not only Palawan, uh, well, and also some other islands, but Palawan is well known to be connected to um, um, mainland Asia. And so this is also represented by the, some of the birds that are found in, in South Asia and it's also found in Palawan, but not found in the rest of, um, of the Philippines. I just like to example this um, Asian fair bluebird. So if you see Asian fair bluebird and you see Philippine fair bluebird, the picture I showed earlier in Zona, you would have seen um, the whole family. It's too fast. There are only two. Um, chestnut breasted malacoha is also in mainland Asia. Um, so this is also in Palawan. And great say to woodpeck is also in Palawan, also in South Asia. And we have other birds as well, like common Iora, sweat babblers. And this is also evident by the, um, the mammals that Palawan has not found in the rest of the Philippines, like the Palawan stink badger. I finally saw in, in January this year. Um, Palawan pangolin is the, the, the most trapped mammal in the world is in Palawan. And Binturong bear cats also in Palawan, but not in the rest of the Philippines. So it's, as I mentioned earlier, um, Palawan is really, really nice. And um, it's very touristy. This is one of the first tourist spots. This is called the um, Puerto Princesa Underground River National Park. And uh, well, now they probably don't get a lot of tourists now, but, but before COVID, there's like hundreds of, of boats coming in every day um, to go inside here. Uh, it's, it's just like a 40 minute um, boat ride. We go inside and just, just to see the um, underground river. Well, there are not many birds there. Maybe there are some edible nest swiftlets there. And so, but there are some really nice spots as well. Um, but we also go to the underground river for 
the birds, of course. And one of the birds there is the Palawan Peacock Festival, which is endemic to Palawan. It's uh, very, very beautiful. It's probably one of the most beautiful um, um, birds in the Philippines. And um, it's kind of easy, to see. it was kind of easy to see there. Otherwise, it's very difficult to see as most other peacock pheasants. As you can see how easy it is, this is one of my uh, guests, and then it comes near you. Um, unfortunately, um, it wasn't found again last year, but it was, this is a long lived bird. I think it's almost 20 years old. And then people were, everyone, everyone was scared it might finally, you know, um, succumb or, or go away or die. And then I think last year it might have actually died. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we find a new one here or something. Um, so um, we have, as I said, I said, we have 22 different endemics in, um, in Palawan and here are just a few samples. Uh, this is a lovely sunbird. This is a white vented shama and uh, let me throw the leaves bird. This is a really nice one, a blue paradise flycatcher, a quite a flycatcher, so this is a brown blue flycatcher, and this is a very, very cute flower one flycatcher. And of course, the flower and form book. Um, everyone wants to see this one. Um, so, Cockatoo, Philippine cockatoo. So Philippine cockatoo is not endemic to Palawan. It's endemic to the Philippines, but it's, it's critically endangered. And um, it used to be common all over the Philippines, but because of poaching as most, with most other parrots, poaching and the pet trade, the population just uh, disappeared. And then it's only found in a few islands, few select islands. And one of the best places for, for the Philippine cockatoo is now only Palawan. Um, it's been quite reliable to see it now there, but only in a few, in a few numbers. In some islands, if you go south, see hundreds of them. They, now there's a good the Catala Foundation. Uh, it's a good uh, conservation foundation that protects them and then also provides um, education for the public so that the people there, if you go there, people know the Catalano and um, they know to preserve it and not, not to hunt it. It's another endemic for the half-cated wren babbler. It's another one of the good, very good songsters, things and sings if you hear it. Um, so I have another sampling song. This is, so now, of course, it's always night birding in the Philippines. You never sleep here in the Philippines. A plow and frog mouth. <laughs> and then um, this one is um, plow and scop salt. It's, I don't have a song of this, but I, this is a very, the sound of it is very, it's almost inaudible, it's very, very low range. And it's, 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 it's very different from other owls. Okay, so we're done with the Philippines after three or four days. Now um, we can go somewhere else. Um, let's go to Mindanao. Mindanao is the second biggest um, island in the Philippines, and we need seven to eight days there um, if you want to see quite a good number of uh, endemics. And then usually um, we have like the we go to Mount Kitanglad and then Davao and Picot Mount Kitanglad, you get some the high elevation birds, and then Picot, you get to go see the low land um, birds. So, this is from a long time ago, I think maybe 10 years ago. This is me guiding a few of my friends. I'm not sure if um, Christine and Janelle are here with us in this uh, chat. Um, so, and this is one of the, the largest that we call it. It, does, it looks very, very basic, but we actually provide um, a tent. And then that's where we 
see there's a dormitory upstairs. And then that, the that lady behind is the one who cooks for us. Um, and then there's a table if you have a dining. But just around this area, already, this actually takes about an hour to get to this, this, this site. Um, and so just around that area, you can see already endemics, um, mountain endemics. This is a black and cinnamon fan tail. Cinnamon ebon. Cinnamon ebon is now probably considered a separate family. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's official yet, but I, it's being considered. Um, but now I think it's for the swap sparrows. And rufous headed tail bird. The, the, this is actually a member of the, um, the mountain tail bird group, which is not tail bird. <laughs> anyway, so this is a, another um, a view of the viewpoint that we go to. And from, from there, we go up here and we get to see this view of Mount Cape and Lattice, is that called the Eagle Viewpoint. And this is where we look for the majestic Philippine Eagle. So the, the guy in red is on the scope is um, the guy, the Carlito, local guy, Carlito. And there's like that. Sometimes we have to wait for hours. Sometimes it's for two, three hours. So it depends how long it takes to find the, find the Philippine eagle. Sometimes you see it right there. But um, usually we first see other eagles, Philippine serpent eagle and pincers hawk eagle flying over a perch. And then so we see them and then we think, oh, it's them. It's, 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 it's that, it's, it's the bird, it's the bird. I mean, it's a Philippine eagle, but sometimes it's not because you can see this, the size is not quite right. And of course, while looking also, you get to see the smallest raptors on the other hand, the Philippine falcon net. This is a few falcon nets uh, that are endemic to the Philippines. So, so after much effort, sometimes we eventually finally see a Philippine eagle. We always look for the white spot that's perched somewhere in the, the, the forest. I don't know if you can see in the picture, it's that white little spot in the branch. It's very small, but it actually in the, in the, with the scope, you can actually see quite well with it, the, 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 the crest and the large bill. But if you're very lucky, sometimes you get to see it soaring just above us and then, and then soaring. But I think, I, and then, and I think that's pretty much when the time that it's, you know, worth it, the, the long way to scope it. So the Philippine eagle is also called a monkey eating eagle. It's um, critically endangered and endemic to the Philippines. It's the national bird of the Philippines. It's in Mindanao and it's in Samar and Luzon. But the best site for it is, the, is Mindanao, where it's the most the sites for it are, um, are most accessible. Um, there are only, I'm not sure about the numbers, about 300, 400 pairs left in the wild because a uh, pair needs about 100 square kilometers to survive and they feed on, on um, long-tailed monkey, a uh, long-tailed macaques, macaques. And also in Mindanao, they're supposed to feed on flying lemurs. Sometimes you see, if lucky, you get to see one with the perch, I mean, with the, with prey. And it's um, and like in the picture. So it's, it's considered also the, the biggest um, eagle in the world, um, the female measuring two meters. Uh, we'll win. Yeah. So here you go. Uh, everybody wants to see this Philippine eagle, and Mindanao is the place to go for it. So um, as soon as we see the eagle, now everybody is happy and everybody is, you know, um, not stressed anymore because now we can focus on seeing the other endemics that are also there, um, like the McGregor's Cook Shrike. Um, and striped breasted rob dornis uh, are just around the area. Or if we want to go slightly higher up, again, another another hour, two hours, hike up, you're going to see Apo Sunbird, which is in, only found in the highest of elevations, uh, about more than 2,000 meters above sea level. And of course, the, my favorite there. One of my favorite birds there is the Apomina. It's a starling, it's so beautiful. They also always go in flocks. 
and and go on the way down, you see red ear parrot finch. This is pretty rare, but it's tiny. I mean, the sound is very tiny. At night, again, um, you see well, at dusk and at dawn, you, see, you can see the um, Bukidnon woodcock. This is actually an extraordinary picture by my friend Chris Bennett. You don't usually see it like this out in the open. You see it flying and roading, and or or you see it, you know, like you flush it off in the in the trail. But it's a big bird. It's it's an endemic. It's also now Bukidnon is name of the province in Mindanao, but it's not only in Bukidnon, it's also now in Luzon and other places, but endemic to the Philippines. And at night, of course, um, just by the lodge, we have Philippine frog mouth. Look at those uh, beautiful eyes. <laughs> and uh, of course, the giant stops out. This is so in, we need about um, three you should spend three nights there in um, Ketanglad, and then we go south, we go we go down, and then to the to the east, um, and we go uh, to Pitcock, which is a lowland forest. This is um, what the what the left of the forest looks like, um, and this is a nice uh, trail. Okay, so the, actually. Peacock, Mindanao lowland forest is very, very, very birdy, and there's a lot of bird activities. Unfortunately, the forest is being deforested at an alarming rate, but you know, if you go a very good site, and there's so many birds there, and so many endemics. And just an example is the white horned bull. That is, the male is the one at the bottom, and the female is the black one above. And then there also has kingfishers. Rufus Lloyd Kingfisher, um, Blue Cap Wood Kingfisher is really nice. Uh, that one's also in Kitanglad. Uh, and Silver Kingfisher is the southern Silver Kingfisher. And uh, really nice for uh, looking hoople, for, uh, for a hoople, the black faced hoople, the yellow, yellow um, on the breast and the back, the head, the mantle. And everybody wants to see this bird. This is the Mindanao water bottle. And of course the azure breasted pitta. Here's pitta. This is this this bird is in um, Mindanao and Bohol as well. And um, this is one of the easiest pitta because it's quite responsive. Um, but yeah, and also one of the most beautiful ones. And if everybody wants to see again, um, celestial monarch, short crested monarch, Rufus Paradise flycatchers. In the book, even the book describes them as superb. And, uh, and so these are really, really good looking, uh, beautiful and them. So we have actually there are a lot more birds to be found in peacock that I don't have a lot of time to sh show everyone, every, every bird. Uh, naked face spider hunter, handsome sunbird, metallic wing sunbird, some some of the sunbirds and stuff like this there. Okay, so that's that, that's uh, it for Mindanao. Um, so actually, that that whole trip, you know, the one that I just talked about, Luzon, Palawan, and Mindanao, that's usually like a main tour, and it usually already takes. Three weeks, so 21 days. So if you have more time, we have more time. We can go to um, the central island, which is uh, Visayas, and then usually the Bohol, um, this that one, the circular island, Cebu, the Long Island, and the Mount Pan I mean, but Negros. Just so. We we'll start with Bohol. As I mentioned earlier, Bohol is very similar to um, the birds of Mindanao, so a lot of similar birds. Um, this is a picture of the Rahasikatuna National Park, the park grounds, and this is where we go for the birding there. And this is the famous Chocolate Hills, 
but these are limestone outcrops. Um, it's just, this is, they, I think they're called chocolates because when it's really dry, they become brown. And then it's that stunning, stunning view. Uh, I think, I don't, I think there's another place in Indonesia where you get see something like it, but not as spectacular as uh, Bohol. Um, Bohol is also famous for um, tarsier. This is the Philippine tarsier. And um, this is the Philippine kuluga. I mentioned earlier that this is one of the um, diet of the Philippine eagles in Mindanao. And it's uh, nocturnal usually. Okay, so back to birds. This is the Philippine trogon. It's not endemic to Bohol. It's actually all over the Philippines, but Bohol is a very good site for it. It's quite common there. For some reason, there are many Philippine trogons in Bohol. And then these are some, these are because also of the, although it's similar to Mindanao, some birds have been split to northern and southern. This is an example of the, this is like called the Bisayan blue fantail, and this is a Bisayan wattle broadbill. And this one is like Philippine leaf robber, also, also in Mindanao. And so, so I mentioned, I think the Bohol is only has one endemic. And this yellow breasted tailbird is not in Mindanao, so you have to go there to see it. But it's, it's not the one endemic, it's, it's also, this one is also found in Samar and later. But now that the split in type being some Bohol summit, this is the Bohol summit is the endemic to Bohol. And of course, there's owls there. Uh, this is an Everett Scops owl, which is actually quite, quite common there. So Cebu, now we head on to Cebu, which is about two hours. There's ferry, there's no flights from Bohol to Cebu. This is a short ferry ride from, from Bohol. So Cebu is one of the most deforested islands. And the Philippines is mostly deforested, but Cebu is one of them with like 90% of the forest has been deforested. And so, but it's, it's sad because there are only there are three endemics there and there's quite some good birds there. So there are only few sites. Uh, this, this site is called the Tabunan, which is just an hour from Cebu City, which is a bustling big city, the second biggest in, in the Philippines. So this is one of the endemics, uh, Black Shama. This is, if you go there, this is uh, pretty much, um, you can see it. Uh, this one. Cebu flower factor is very, 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 right? It's critically endangered. Um, and uh, it actually was already extinct um, in the past, but it was rediscovered sometime in 1992. And um, so it's still managing somehow, but it's very, very difficult to see. I, I don't know how many there are, less than 50, like 20 maybe individuals. And of course, like all islands, all islands have owls. Good thing this is, um, has, you mean, I mean, has their representative owl. This is the Cebu hawk owl. And then now, usually Cebu, we need this today. So now we can head over to Negros. Negros is um, in the Western Visayas and has a lot of endemics, 19 endemics. This is uh, Mount Kanlon. So some of the common birds there, the smaller birds, small flocking birds, like this one is the cyan blue-headed sandtail, white vented whistler, Supreme canary flycatcher, Supreme canary flycatcher is not endemic, so it's very nice to see. And this one is maroon H sunbird, beautiful. This is a magnificent sunbird. It's a split from, um, from, um, oh, the, <laughs> But I just left me now. Um, crimson sunbird from Southeast Asia. It's now the uh, magnificent sunbird. And this is a uh, Visayan flower petal. And then there are some of the bigger birds there. This is a Belica shell, the white bellied race of it. It's Filipino oriole and white winged cuckoo shrike. 
Um, this is the white wing coop track endemic to Negros and Panay. And this one is everybody wants to see the bird. I, I, I put three pictures because it's very, very beautiful. This is a flame temple babbler, also endemic to Negros and Panay. And then yellow face flame back is quite rare, but possible to see. And a lot more rare is Negros beating heart. Not so possible, it, it, but it's, I guess everything is possible. And then, of course, there is um, the endemic, uh, the endemic and representative owl, which is the Negro Scots owl. Okay, so after that, finish the whole month is finished, and then we'll finish the uh, birding in the Philippines. But actually, no, there's more. <laughs> um, so there are sometimes people come. Again, another time, like another year or two years after, and then we have, um, I'm not sure if I have a lot more time, but so I'm just going to go through this briefly in there, but there are other islands, like I mentioned earlier, that, that bird areas, um, that um, have also endemics. And then, so usually we go to Mindoro, which is this island in a, in a roundish island in between this, the Luzon and, and Palawan has nine endemics. Tablas and Rombon, those three islands just to the uh, east of Mindoro, and Padai is another place, although it's, it's, although it's um, part of, ornithologically speak, part of Negros. Um, Padai has a lot more forests and a lot more. So the Negros bleeding heart is actually possible, much more possible to see in Panay, but quite inaccessible. Um, so we, sometimes if you really want to see if you're a person, want to see as many endemics as possible, you have to go there. So I'll just, just go through um, this briefly. Bindora, this is a picture. Bindora is a very, um, very picturesque, one of the picturesque islands, very beautiful. Um, I only have one picture of a landscape picture here, but. This is a, uh, in Sublion, it's a penal colony, and it's one of the last remaining. Mindoro, again, the lowland forest is quite deforested, but um, this is a, because it's a penal colony, the forest has been preserved somewhat. Um, so this is the Lubao Lake inside the penal, Sublion penal colony. Okay, Mindor, Mindoro has a, actually, it's not, not maybe, I don't know when it, uh, divided from Palau, but Mindoro is also probably part of the main, mainland continent of Asia. That's why there's also um, some big animals there, like this one, tamarauds. Only, only in, in Mindoro that's found. It's endemic water buffalo. It's different from the ordinary water buffalo that we have, which is an endemic wild buffalo only found in, in Mindoro. And so there are, I'm not going to go through all the different um, endemics, but um, just a few, like, like the scarlet colored flower pecker, black footed cuckoo, and then there's also Mindor bleeding heart there. It's, you have to be extremely, extremely lucky, extremely, extremely, <laughs> extremely, extremely um, persistent to find one. And of course, there's Mindoro Hakao. Um, so also in a remote tour, we, um, we go back to the zone of Sierra Madre because um, this a week in the zone actually don't see everything yet. But sometimes you go to Sierra Madre and there's a campaign, and but there are also some easier sites to go to. And then there's um, up north in the Calagan Island, the Buenas are really adventurous. So this is an example of a uh, picture uh, place. It's very beautiful. It's called Blue Waters in Cagayan. Uh, so this one is the target bird, the, the special star bird there. It's called the Isabella Oriole. It's another one that's critically endangered, and um, there's very few of them left, um, maybe 50 to a couple of hundreds. Uh, but um, good, there's a foundation there that helps uh, protect it. And then, so there are also, of course, a lot of different birds there. Uh, white Lord Oriole is an endemic, and 
Golden Crown Battler, the Zone Strike Battler, um, and then Blue Front did the, I believe, just a flight capture. I didn't put any yeah. picture. And Mark, uh, yes. five minutes, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm almost finished. Okay, thank you. So Kalayan Rail is another, like an adventurous, if you're being adventurous, Kalayan Island is a picture of the Kalayan Line in, in uh, Taiwan. I think it's very similar to Banyo Island in Taiwan. Um, there's like the whistling green pigeons and chestnut ear bobo. But this is a, the Kalayan Rail. It's only found in Kalayan and it's only discovered very recently in 2004 by uh, members of actually friends of ours, a friend of mine and a member of the Bird Club. And then lastly, oh, this is my last, I promise my last slide. I haven't been there and um, I want to be able to go there someday. But so the Dawi Dawi has six endemics. Um, I, I don't organize trips there, so <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so this is the forest of the Dawi Dawi. And then the six of them, it's like a blue wing rocket tail. Um, so her, nobody's seen it, nobody, there's no picture of it. Like earlier, like the Subu Flower said, there's no pictures of it. That's why I posted something, perfect picture of it. Tawi Tawi Brown Dove, there's also now and also a, a, a woodpecker that's endemic to um, Sulu. And of course, the bird that I want to see the most in the Philippines that I haven't seen, that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see, is the Sulu Hornbill. Very critically endangered, and the only population size is very, very small, as you can see here. Okay, so uh, I guess I just want to end, I'm, I'm going to end the talk and then to say, to, um, I hope that you enjoyed the, all the different um, endemics of, of, the, of the Philippines. Um, the, the easy sites to go to, the more difficult sites to go to, uh, but, uh, but in the end, there's like still a lot to be discovered. And a lot. I hope that you know, we're able to conserve the forest so that um, yeah, people from, from you guys can come visit and um, and then also the people the Filipinos can enjoy the um, you know the treasure that we have the only in the Philippines. And anyway, okay, thank you, thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mark. It it looks like it's more fun in the Philippines. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's more adventurous. I'm not sure fun right now, but yes, it is in birding wise, it's very fun. Okay, uh, so we uh, we have uh, two questions from Martin from Malaysia. Uh, he he wants to know the the accommodation in Subic, and also he's asking is the population of the Philippine eagle increasing? Okay. Um, the the accommodation in Subic there is actually a good good site. It's got touristy sites, so there. Are, a lot of range, different ranges of um, of this uh, budget, and then also some really nice, nice um, hotels there. The Philippine Eagle, I don't think it's increasing because deforestation is still rampant and still going on. Although there's our conservation groups like the Philippine Eagle Foundation that helps um, protect and then does uh, conservation work and also information dissemination, but I. With the um, deforestation, I don't think it's going to be helping with an increase of the non population of the Philippine Eagle. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions from our friends? Anybody? This is a very rich presentation. Thank you. Oh, I took, it took me one hour. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Any any questions? Uh, I have a question for Mark. It's Tin. Mark. Uh, yeah. For yeah. birders who want to see the Cebu flower pecker, what can we expect? Sorry, which one? The Cebu flower pecker. Mm. What uh, sort of um, god should we pray to to see it? What sort of what? Who do we pray to to see it? Oh, okay. Maybe. <laughs> uh, well, I think there's a maybe there's a 
um, people studying them. And then also there's a place in Nugas where there are rangers um, who monitor, try to monitor and count them, or I don't know, or monitor their population or try to find them. I think there are probably the best, I don't know, you could probably spend a year there and then maybe not still see it. But um, I suppose if you have to befriend some of the rangers who try to look for them every day, I think that's the best. That's the best um, um, way to do it. Have you seen it though? I have kind of seen it one time. It wasn't the best view, but I, I saw it one time in Cebu. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, and if a bird has only a short time, would you take him to Luzon or Mindanao? Luzon, um, because um, as you can see in the Mindanao, Mindanao um, is uh, the, it's not the easiest place to go to. Like there's hiking involved. Oh, there sometimes the people want to see the Philippine eagle, so they want to yeah. see the Philippine eagle. They want to, they have to go to Mindanao, and then some. Some years there are nests that are found and then it's very that are accessible. So, you know, if, if that's the year and then and people don't want to go hiking and camping, then that's a good year for them. But otherwise, I recommend Luzon because the mm -hmm. places to go to like in Phantom, Healing, Subic, very easy. Um, this forest are just roadside birding. And um, I also recommend Palawan. Palawan okay. and Luzon. Yeah. Okay. So like um, how many days minimum in, in, in Luzon? Well, it's it's up to you really. Um, three depends. It's highly customizable, I guess. Like a week in Luzon, three, you have two days, you can go to just one site. You have four days, you can go to two sites. Uh, one week, you can go to more sites. In Palawan? Palawan, actually in Palawan and Luzon, you can actually kind of combine them together. And yeah. for a week, I think, of four days, three days, for both. Okay. It is safe traveling in Mindanao. This is a lot of the countries have um, advisory again. Like for a week, I think, of four days, three days, for both. Okay. Sorry. It's safe traveling in Mindanao. This okay. is. Countries have um, advisory again. I think the four days, three days, for both. Sorry, safe traveling in Mindanao. Okay. So. Countries have um, advisory again. I think the four days, three days. If you get a smartphone, just just turn off. Safe traveling in Mindanao. Okay, so yeah, I guess we have some uh, technical problem, but I guess it's okay here. Um, Is it okay now? It's okay yeah. now, okay. Yeah, okay. it's okay now. Uh, okay, this, sometimes travel adv advisory against going to Mindanao. Um, we usually, if you want to go to Mindanao, we usually go to the site, safe, safe site. Um, um, we we know the sites well, um, but and we don't go to the. There are of course places that you don't go to, as anywhere in the world. You know there are places that you go to and not go to, and not safe places. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I guess if you there's a travel advisory, I mean it will be up to you to to go, because you know, there's this insurance and everything that's involved. But I usually the places we go to are safe. And what is a, is the bleeding heart found in the specific area? In where? In, in any specific area. Um, bleeding hearts are found in the forest, and um, it's very flighty, very very easily scared. So while walking, you don't see it. You have to be really extremely quiet, extremely. The, the best in and out, easiest to see is the Luzon bleeding heart. The rest are very difficult. The second easy is the Mindanao being hard. The rest are almost impossible. Okay. Okay. So um, any question? 
if there's no question, then we thank Mark for the excellent presentation. Question for you. Okay. From your... Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. You got yeah. uh, and I have not been... <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to take uh, a brief photo. Okay, okay. everyone. So let's take a group photo, everyone. Please look at the camera, and smile, and don't move. And one, two, three, go. Thank you very much. Okay, let's thank, thank you, thank Mark you, Mark again. Great presentation, and we'll see you all next Friday, same time. Bye.